In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the two rail sweep within ArcCam Insignia. The two rail sweep icon is located here. So I'll just click on that and here you can see the dialog box for the two rail sweep. And also on the screen, I have created five vectors. I'm going to click this vector here and I'm going to select that as the top drive rail. You'll notice that that turns into A and it also adds some arrow heads to the vector. This is just specifying the direction that the line is going in. I'm going to select this bottom vector and then click bottom drive rail. Now, as you can see, this is now B and the arrow heads are going from right to left. So they're opposite to the first drive rail. So I want these to both be going in the same direction. So I can reverse the direction of one of the drive rails. So I'll click on the second drive rail here and that reverses the direction of the drive rail. What I'm going to do is to add some cross sections now and what the two rail sweep is going to do is place the cross section in between these two rails that I've selected and create a sweeping effect. I'm going to add that as a cross section. You'll notice it's changed to number one and it also has a one at the start of the top drive rail and a one at the start of the bottom drive rail. If I click calculate, go to the 3D view, there you can see that that's placed that particular form or that particular cross section in between that drive rail and basically extruded it across the two rails. So I'm going to reset the relief now. I'll reset my selection. Select that as the top and that as the bottom drive rail. And I'm going to show you how to add two cross sections to this. So I'm going to add the same cross section as previously. This time I'm going to add the top cross section as well. So if you notice it changes to 1 and 2 and also here on the drive rails you will see a 1 at the start and a 2 at the end. So basically this is going to take the first cross section and then slowly blend into the second cross section towards the end of the rails. So if you go to the 3D view and calculate this you can see if I just turn this around, you can see this cross section on the left hand side and then if I turn this around, the second cross section on the right hand side. So this is slowly starting to turn into what I actually want this to look like, which is a flag. So if we go back to the 2D view, reset the relief layer. And what I'm going to do this time is to use a Z control vector. So this actually modulates in Z. So I'm going to select this vector at the bottom here and click select. Now if I wished I could click vector controls the exact height. So what relief would be made would be exactly the same as this height on this Z control vector. So if I just calculate this now, you can see it's going high here and then coming down and just following the pattern on the Z control vector. So starting to look like a flag here. What I can also do for the cross sections is add, let's say, a third cross section if I wished. So I'll just reset all of my two rail sweep options select the top and the bottom drive rails I'm going to select that as a cross section then that as a cross section I'll select that one again so here you can see it's changed the number three now so I've got one two and three 
but let's say for instance I wanted to add that again twice so here you can see I have five cross sections here if I wanted to change the position of let's say number four I could move down to number four click position and just change the position of the first drive rail so there you can see that that's just moved the position of that there so if I calculate this now go to the 3D view you can see it's modulating between all of those cross sections so it's given me quite a weird shape so you can specify as many numbers of cross sections along these rails as you wish so I'm going to reset that and reset the relief layer and here we have scale height with width what this actually does is it maintains proportionally the height of the relief as it stretches it across the width of the two guide rails. I can also scale the final height and add a start height. So what I'm going to do is to select my two drive rails. I'm going to select this as my Z control vector as previously. I'll just do two cross sections here and I'm going to scale the height with the width this time I'm going to scale the final height so I'll do that at let's say 15 and calculate so there you can see it's not as high as it was previously so it's just coming up here and then slowly blending down if I wish to add a start height onto that let's say 10 and calculate you can see it's added a flat onto the bottom of the flag so I'm not going to add the start height I'll just click calculate and here we have the combined modes if you take a look at the shape editor video before this I'll explain all of these modes in a lot more detail so I'm going to close my two rail sweep now and I'm just going to finish this off by going to the 2D view and I'm going to turn on this temporary vector layer here going to just click here to preview the relief so there you can see the relief within the 2D view and I'm going to click on the vector that I've created on the outside and click here for the shape editor I can also double click on the vector if I wish to open the shape editor or I could click F12 so that's opened up my shape editor and I'm just going to do a zero rest so it cuts out all of the parts that are on the outside of that particular vector. I'm also going to select this pole, double click on that and I'm just going to create a dome, start height of 5mm, go to the 3D view and there you can see my finished flag using the two rail sweep.